I'm a huge fan of music documentaries myself. So I, I was quite taken aback that they wanted to do one on me. New York was a huge part of what made me do what I do. I was playing tabla since I was a boy. The electric tabla came out because I needed to be heard in yeah. rock bands, you know, yeah. playing with guitar players and drummers and things like that. I never really gave up the drums. I've always just kind of added these things to my palette. Fusion is not something that that we started. Old Bollywood film music is fusion yeah. music. Zakir Bhai, I, I toured with him for five years and yeah. he was and still is my idol. He was yeah. the reason why I started playing tabla. This was a year where I'm addressing my music a little bit differently. And I realized that people need music for a different reason besides just entertainment. Sure. You know, music is medicine. I'm a huge fan of music documentaries myself. I watch a lot of documentaries. So I, I was quite taken aback that they wanted to do one on me. You know, one doesn't think that uh, in the middle of your career that, you know, there's enough of a story to tell. Uh, and also that's usually kind of, there's a conclusion and my story's not over yet. So yeah. I, I was a little bit, uh, I asked them both, well, why do you want to do that on, on me? There's so many different artists out there that you could, that yeah. have long, much longer careers, you know. So I was, I was a bit shy about the, the idea in the beginning. There are other artists like Coldplay and all who have had documentaries made on them and their journey is still mm -hmm. on. So I think it sort of makes sense because it's inspiring in that way. Obviously, New York shaped you a lot. A lot of the documentary is about how New York shaped you. Do you think it would have been different in any other city? Like, or do you think it is very, very important that you grew up where you grew up? New York was a huge part of what made me do what I do. Um, it was the right environment. Yeah. I think if I had grown up or gone to school in a different city, uh, I might have it gone in a different anyway. way. Yeah, it would have been different. Yeah. I mean, New York is very unique in that way. Uh, it definitely pulls out the best in people, no matter what you're doing. You know, it's not a cliche what Sinatra said. It's true though, it's inspiration at every corner. Like you say at one point that you carried your CDs uh, for a tour that you went and I remember going to New York and I was just standing on a corner and you know, guys came up to me and said, can you please listen to our CD and why don't you come to Brooklyn tonight? We are playing yeah. here and this is our CD. And, and it was like, it was, it was constant, it was everywhere. So, so obviously yeah. that inspires you, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that was kind of the right before signing my record deal. I was, you know, not only was I going on tour with my CDs, but I was going from to small record shops yeah. and selling them 10, 15 CDs just to see what would happen. You know, yeah. that was kind of uh, the beginning, you know, back back in those days, we used to, you know, to get people to come to shows, we had to go out and give flyers on the streets and yeah. Yeah. put up posters and, you know, kind of a lot of self-promotion, whereas nowadays we can send an invite on Facebook and Instagram. The city that you relate to in India the most, is there, is there any city like that? That, was def that would be Bombay. Bombay. I spent decades uh, in Bombay and going back and forth between New York and Bombay and Delhi as well. But Bombay definitely for me felt most like New York. Um, yeah. Just the pace and the energy. Sure, um, sure. And also the, the amount of talent that you're constantly meeting. What point would you say that you decided to give up the drums for the electric tabla? I mean, was there so, sort of like a sense of belonging to the tabla because you were Indian? I, I mean, I was, I was playing tabla since I was a boy. Um, yeah. The electric tabla came out of, uh, I, I built those because I needed to be heard in yeah. rock bands, you know, yeah. playing with guitar players and drummers and things like that. I never really gave up the drums. I've always just kind of added these things to my palette. Yeah. So I was also a drummer as well. When I joined Tabla Beat Science, I was playing electric tabla and drum kit yeah. with Zakir Bhai, Sultan yeah. Khan and Tabla as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I never really, I never gave up the drums. It was just something that, in fact, the drums informed my ability to be able to do other things. I mean, you could be called a pioneer of fusion. When you were doing it in New York and, uh, you know, uh, performing in clubs like I think with uh, DJ Rekha, why do you think that kind of music was working at that time in a place like New York? I think that people were searching for a, a, a new identity. Uh, and every generation is always looking for their own identity. Sure. And uh, I mean, and fusion is not something that that we started. Fusion has been happening. I mean, 
old Bollywood film music is fusion yes. music. You yes. know? And yes. it's been happening. People like Zakir Bai and Trilok Gurtu and El Shankar yes. and all of these guys were doing that in the 70s. Level. Yeah. Shakti was happening. Yeah. Um, so, you know, this was kind of, you know, we needed to find our sound and our identity. And, and so people, I, I think that's what really resonated with people. That why people were kind of, were packing the clubs. And it wasn't just Indians. You know, it wasn't just a sound. Yeah, exactly. I think what we were doing, that's why it happened, it happening in New York made so much sense because yeah. people felt like it was their music, even though they didn't understand the language or, yeah. you know, there was something about the music that made them feel like it was theirs. Yeah. And, you know, I, and I, I think that that's, that's even true today. I think that people, you know, when they're searching for a type of, uh, or, or an identity in music, you know, that's where we, and we go to the clubs because that's where people are experimenting sure. with sound. Sure, you sure. Know, they're trying things out. You know. Yeah. Talked about your album Liberation, which came after, you know, a 9-11. And I want to ask, like, how do you remain Indian, but also a New Yorker? I think that is the, the essence of being a New Yorker. There is nobody, it's very hard to find somebody who is born in Manhattan. Yeah. Everybody who's in that city is from yeah. somewhere else. Sure. And then they become the New, a New Yorker. New Yorker. So there's, so everybody is, has that duality. You might be, yeah. you know, from Europe and you're a New Yorker. You might be from Africa, but you're a New Yorker. You, you know, so that's kind of the, the one thing that, that, you know, made New Yorkers connect. And yeah. then the excitement is to be in this multicultural environment with people who are constantly showing you new things, new food, new music, you know. Yeah. At the end of the documentary, Zakir Sen says that, you know, you found a new audience for classical music, you know, people who are not listening to classical music. So how did that make you feel since he is like one of your, your mentors? So. Everything that he said made me weep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, it's, that's, that was just too much. I could, you know, you know, I mean, anytime you hear people say something nice about, what it is that you've done. And, and especially someone like Zakir Bai, who, you know, he's, uh, I, I toured with him for five years and yeah. he was, and still is my idol. He was yeah. the reason why I started playing tabla. So to have him acknowledge anything that I've done, you know, so when you're a classical musician, you seek blessing from your gurus. And, you know, so that was what that was for me. It was, you know, the ultimate blessing to hear him say that. How has 2020 uh, maybe changed you as a musician? I mean, all that has happened with us. What do you see the future of music or live music now? Well, I mean, there hasn't been much live music. I haven't played live show really since February. So I, I think what it's changed is, I think for everyone, we've had to be reflective and we've had to, you know, kind of go back and ask ourselves a lot of questions about why we do what we do. And how we're going to do it in the future. I mean, we all know that at some point we're going to be getting back on stage. Yeah. And yeah. I think when we're, when we're running in the, you know, when we're caught up in the rat race, we tend not to look back. We tend not to look around and we just running. Yeah. So this was a year where a lot of us got to just stop and look at what we, you know, have done and, you know, and, and kind of have this forced time out yeah. to, you know, to really look at, uh, you know, how we want to move forward. So, you know, I, as, as a musician, I think that I'm, you know, I, I'm addressing my music a little bit differently. Yeah. And, and I realize that people need music for a different reason besides just entertainment. True. You know, music is medicine. And as you say in, your, in, in, your, in the documentary as well, it's going to come out in some form in your music, what you're feeling, what you felt this year, some way it's going to come out, right? I mean, there's going to be some amazing music that comes out next year, I think. Love. I think not just for myself, but uh, a lot of musicians who have, yeah. you know, and not just musicians, artists. Yeah. People artists. who are expressing, you know, yeah. they, they, they have a lot to say now. Thank you so much for taking our time to talk to me. Thanks a ton. Thank you. Bye. Subscribe to Midday India. Get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon.